What's up guys? Today is part two of the series where I compare native effects from Final Cut Pro that come with your app for free versus third party plugins. Which one performs better? If you didn't see part one of this series, I'll link to it down below, but I know a lot of you guys love that video and you've been waiting for this one. Everything I talk about today is going to be linked down below if you want to snap it up for yourself. And we're going to be talking about motion tracking, the sharpening filter, color correction, and voice isolation. Let's just get right into it with Final Cut Pro's Object Tracker versus M Tracker 3D from Motion VFX. Now the object tracker from Final Cut and the M Tracker 3D effect from Motion VFX work really differently. Let me first show you how you use the motion tracker in Final Cut Pro. So selected on this clip in my inspector, I'm going to add a tracker and I'm going to get this grid in my viewer and I'm just going to resize and reposition this grid over this structure on the bridge to get my track. Now I'm just going to hit the analyze button at the top of the viewer and Final Cut is going to attempt to track that part of the bridge. That worked in a snap and it looked like it did a pretty good job of tracking the bridge. Now let me add my 3D text on top of this. And what I really want is for the text to look like it's attached to the bridge. So now I've got my text in place here. I'm going to select my tracker and let's see that finished result. So what's interesting about this motion track is that no matter how much the perspective changes in the shot, I'm always seeing the letters from the same angle. Do you see that? The perspective on the angle never changes. Now let me show you how it works with M Tracker 3D for motion VFX. So the tracking process is a little bit different. I've got the same shot here. And the first thing I need to do is drop the M Tracker 3D effect onto my clip. And the next step is super simple. You just hit the track button. You don't need to select anything in the frame the way you do with the Final Cut Object Tracker. The tracking process with M Tracker 3D is a bit longer than with the Object Tracker native to Final Cut Pro. All right, now I need to add my text to this, but I can't just use like regular text from Final Cut. I need to go up to my Titles and Generators browser and find the M Tracker 3D category. And there's a whole bunch of different styles of text. I'm going to drop this one into my clip and I'm just going to make it look the same as my original text. All right, that looks pretty similar. Now I need to go back to my original clip here and I need to copy the track that we created just a second ago, head back over to my title. And this time, instead of the text inspector, I'm going to head on over to the title inspector and hit the paste track button. The title has jumped a little bit, but I can reposition it with these on-screen controls, get it exactly as I want it. And my text now actually looks like it's in the frame and the perspective of the text changes with the camera move. If you look here at the Final Cut version, you can see that the perspective on the text never really changes. I'm seeing just as much of the front or top of the text at the beginning of the frame as I do at the end. Whereas with the M Tracker 3D, by the end of the clip, I'm seeing so much more of the tops of the letters. It really tracks in 3D space. Now, M Tracker 3D does come with all of these different titles, but it also comes with some 3D objects that you can also motion track into your shot. So let's say if I wanted to make this robot look as though he were standing on the bridge, I could do that and I can just paste the same track. And now the robot is also motion tracked into the shot. He looks like he's walking in place on the bridge. Now this is fun and all, but what if you needed to bring in a different type of 3D object that didn't come with M Tracker? For instance, this 3D iPhone, which is in fact a USDZ file. Final Cut doesn't accept USDZ files at this time, but if you have Apple Motion, you can do what I'm about to show you. Let's grab that robot, right click and select open in motion. And here's Motion VFX's motion project. And this motion project is pretty complex. So I'm just going to keep dropping down until I find that actual robot. Watch what I'm about to do. I'm going to select from my finder this iPhone and I'm going to drop it and replace that robot and I'm going to shrink it down some and I'm even going to rotate the parameters of this so it's straighter. All right, close enough for me for now. Now what I'm going to do is head on up to file, save as, and I'm going to save it to my own titles category and hit publish. If I head back over to final cut and I head on over to Jen's titles, 
There is my 3D iPhone project. And then in the title inspector, I have all of those published parameters that Motion VFX built. And so what I'm going to do now is paste the track once again. And I'm going to place my phone here on the bridge. And now my iPhone is motion tracked. So what is my verdict between these two trackers? Honestly, it's hard to declare a winner. I just think that they're two different things for two different purposes. For instance, the other day I used the built-in tracker in Final Cut to cover a logo on someone's shorts for a client and it worked amazingly. And I wouldn't really need the 3D tracker to do that. But if I do want to place 3D objects in space over video content, Really, a 3D tracker like M-Tracker 3D is the way to go. So that is my verdict. All right, let's move on to the next head-to-head -head comparison, which is the Sharpen Filter versus FCP Effects Sharpener. So in this next project, I have four clips of this good looking guy. This is my husband, my poor husband that I make do stuff like this. And we shot him slightly out of focus, a little more out of focus even more out of focus and way the heck out of focus. So can Final Cut's built-in sharpening filter help us here? Can the FCP effect sharpener help? Let's try it out. So I'm first going to apply the sharpen effect to this first kind of soft looking clip. Ironically, sharpen can be found under the blur category. And then here in your inspector window, this is it. This is all you get. It defaults to a value of 2.5. Let me disable it and then enable it. I don't know that it's doing a ton here. If I pull it up a little bit, I do feel like his eyes look sharper and the stitching on his shirt also looks sharper, but I'm getting a lot of like modeling in his skin, which nobody wants. So I'd say that works okay in a pinch. I don't think he looks great, but it's passable. Let's move on to the slightly blurrier shot. Mm, not getting a lot of help there. Here's without, here's with. Yeah, it's helping, but does the shot really look great? I don't think it looks that good. Sharpening's tough though. Let's go to this shot, which is really blurry. Yeah, there's no helping this shot at all, which means that there's definitely no helping this terrible shot. Nothing, nothing we can do to help there. All right, let's move on to the FCP effects sharpener and see if that does any better. So let me drop this effect on this first shot and right away, Look at my inspector window. There's a lot of fine tuning we can do with this plugin, which seems great, but is it really doing anything? I'm just going to start by sharpening the highlights, mids and shadows independently. And so, yeah, I do think we get some good sharpening here. Let's move on to the next one. On this one, I'm just sharpening the midtones, which I like because I'm not getting those crazy black outlines you get with the final cut version. Like if I, crank up the shadows. Do you see those like dark edges I get? It's very cartoony looking. I do like how you can sharpen just the midtones here. And one other thing I like about this plugin, you can mask and sharpen up to three areas with just one effect applied. So in this case, what I would do is I would really just focus on his eyes. So here's with no sharpener and then with the sharpener, I do think if you focus on someone's eyes, if you're trying to sharpen them up, that's really where you're gonna get the most natural looking effect. Let's try applying this to these last two shots that are terrible. Yeah, I don't think there's any hope for these two shots. Hopefully you're never in a situation where anything's this out of focus. So what are my thoughts on this head-to-head -head challenge? I definitely think it's clear that the FCP effects sharpener is the winner. However, sharpening video is not easy to do. I don't ever really think it looks that great if things are out of focus. So if you can avoid this situation by reshooting, I would recommend doing that. All right, let's move on to our next head-to-head -head comparison, which is color correction. We're going to be using all of the many color correction tools in Final Cut Pro versus Color Finale. So we've got this shot here. This was shot in log, and as you can tell, it's a fitness video, and I kind of like the idea of giving this a bit of a gritty look. So that's what we're going to attempt to do with Final Cut's built-in features. Let me open those scopes. And I'm going to close the browser here so I can get a good look. All 
All right, so that is my final cut color grade. I had to apply a lot of effects to this, uh, a color board, a couple color wheels. I used the hue and saturation curves. I used the color adjustment sliders and I added some film grain. For a quick color correction, I think this looks pretty good. Now let's try it with the Color Finale plugin. I'm gonna start by assuming log. And you guys, I'm not gonna get into a super in-depth tutorial on Color Finale because Dylan John here on YouTube has an amazing tutorial for Color Finale. Dylan John is an amazing color corrector in Final Cut and I aspire to be as talented as he is. Dylan, I'm talking to you when you did the edge mask with the towel, you like really blew my mind. It was very impressive. So I'll make sure to link to that video down below if you really want to get an in-depth look at color finale. But for now, I'm just going to show you some of the features that I think are the most useful. So here's a side-by-side -side look at my two color corrections. I think they're pretty similar, but I do prefer the color finale correction. I also prefer the workflow in color finale because you saw that I had to open up so many different color tools in Final Cut Pro to get this effect. I also had to apply the film grain effect in Final Cut Pro, whereas with Color Finale, it was all together. Another feature of Color Finale that I think is just so great is the isolate feature. You could see that I could isolate my subject's skin and make sure his skin tone was right on the skin tone indicator line on the vector scope. Whereas with the Final Cut tools, I had to go into the crop tools and it's just like a lot of extra steps. The other thing I really love about the Color Finale workflow is that you can actually group clips together in your timeline. So when you make color adjustments to one clip, it affects the other clips that you've assigned in that group. So you don't have to remove all of your attributes from a bunch of clips and then paste new attributes. I have suggested a similar workflow to the team at Final Cut Pro. No word on that yet. I do hope it's coming though, because this is such a great workflow. And right now, the only way to do it is through Color Finale. All right, my last head-to-head -head challenge is voice isolation versus the new dialogue enhance effect from FX Factory. Now, if you saw a video I made a while back where I recorded my voice and my colleague's voice in a bunch of very noisy situations and then applied the voice isolation filter to those clips to see how well it could perform in real life conditions, you saw that I was pretty impressed with voice isolation in Final Cut. Honestly, it's truly amazing. But FX Factory just came out with a competing product called Dialogue Enhance. Let's see if it works any better on those exact same clips from a while back. So in this experiment we did, we read these crazy sentences that include all of the phonetic sounds in the English language to see how voice isolation worked on those different clips. So here's me with some road noise. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth-moving headgear? All right, so you can hear all that road noise. Let's apply the voice isolation. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth-moving headgear? And you see what I mean. The voice isolation works really well. Let's test out this road noise with Dialogue Enhance. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth-moving headgear? I think that's a really close call. The one thing that I would say that FX Factory has as an advantage over voice isolation is that if you look here in the inspector for voice isolation, you know that you can only change the amount, whereas with Dialogue Enhance from FX Factory, you can make so many more fine-tuned adjustments in noise reduction, dynamics control, spectrum correction, and loudness boost. So if you're really good at audio editing, you might really prefer the dialogue enhanced tools. Let's try it out on a few other circumstances though. Are those shy Eurasian footwear cowboy chaps or jolly earth moving headgear? Are those shy Eurasian footwear cowboy chaps or jolly earth moving headgear? Are those shy Eurasian footwear cowboy chaps or jolly earth moving headgear? The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. 
The base hue on the waters of the loch impressed all, including the French queen, but first she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. The base hue on the waters of the loch impressed all, including the French queen, but first she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. The base hue on the waters of the loch impressed all, including the French queen, but first she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. So in my opinion, I do think Dialogue Enhance is preferable because you can make a lot of adjustments, especially if you know what you're doing with audio editing. But for me, it's the kind of thing I wouldn't buy unless I needed it. Like if I were in a very specific situation and voice isolation wasn't cutting the mustard, I think then I would reach for Dialogue Enhance and hope for better results. So you guys, what do you think of my head-to-head -head challenge? What other features should I try next? Which plugin impressed you the most. I can't wait to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. All these products are linked below and I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love. I'll see you again.